Problem number 34 of section 1.3.4 is a problem about a pendulum, which is constructed by taking a string and attaching a mass to the end of it. Now, the period of a pendulum is the time that it takes for it to complete one cycle. So it goes up, down, and comes back to where it started from. That time interval is called the period. And it's approximated by the formula t equals 2 pi over the square root, or times the square root of l over g, where l is the length of our string and g is the acceleration due to gravity. Now it's interesting to note here that um, the period is actually completely independent of the mass. So no matter you know, if we attach a paper clip at the end or if we attach a bowling ball at the end, it's not going to affect the period any. Um, not relevant to the problem, but interesting nonetheless. So part A asks um, to, asks to find out what happens as the pendulum is moved into deep space. So here we're working under the assumption that you know, gravitational acceleration decreases because we're you know, moving away from the Earth or whatever planet we happen to be on. So what we want to look at is the limit as gravitational acceleration approaches zero. Now we're assuming that gravitation is always positive here. So um, because we're going to be taking the square root, we don't want to have to deal with um, negative sign there. So look at limit as g approaches 0 from the right of t is the limit as g approaches 0 from the right of 2 pi times the square root of L over g. Now we're really only looking at this, uh, at this limit as g is changing, so everything else is pretty much just a constant. So take 2 pi times the square root of L times the limit as g approaches 0 from the right of 1 over square root g. Now it's a corollary in the text that um, the square root of, or one over, the limit as g goes to 0 of 1 over square root g is, well, just infinity. So here we end up with 2 pi times the square root of L times infinity, which, and we just define this to be infinity. So as we move the pendulum farther and farther into space, there's no acceleration really to restrict the, um, to restrict the period at all, so we end up with just an infinite period. Now, for part B, uh, we'll ask to look at gravitational uh, look at what happens to the period as gravitational acceleration increases. Say, if we're approaching a massive object, so we we'll first want to find the limit as g approaches infinity of t. So, as gravitational acceleration gets bigger and bigger, and that's just the limit as g approaches infinity of two pi times the square root of L over G. Now again we can just factor out the square the 2 pi times the square root of L, which leaves us with the limit as G approaches infinity of 1 over square root G. Now as G approaches infinity we're going to be getting bigger and bigger in the denominator so this whole thing is going to eventually just get really close to zero. So the final answer is 2 pi square root L times zero, which is just zero. So as we as a pendulum increases or it gets closer and closer to a large object, the gravitational acceleration will increase and the, pen, and the period will go to zero, meaning that it'll be going fat, the pendulum will be going faster and faster. All right, now part C, we're going to look at what happens as we let the string get shorter and shorter. So, say what happens when L goes to zero. Now we want to look at the limit as L goes to zero of T, which is still 2 pi square root L over G. Now this time we're looking at 
L, uh, or looking at t as L is changing. So now we can factor out 2 pi over square root g. And that leaves us with the limit as L goes to 0 of the square root of L. Now, this whole thing here is going to be 0 because as we let L get closer and closer to 0, the square root of L is just going to be 0. So we get 0 as the string gets shorter and shorter. Now, the next question to ask is, well, what happens if the string gets longer? So what if L tends towards infinity? Well, we'll have the same thing here as we did before, only now we'll be taking the limit as L goes to infinity of 2 pi square root L, and there's square root L over G. So again, factoring out, we get 2 pi over square root g times the limit as L approaches, or as, yeah, L approaches infinity of 1 over, uh, rather, the square root of L. Now, as L approaches infinity, the square root is also going to uh, tend towards infinity. So our answer is just infinity, meaning that as we end up with, as we let our string get longer and longer, tends toward, tend towards a string of infinite length, our period is also going to be infinite.